On most tube and pipe mills, the gearboxes in the breakdown section have an unequal gear ratio to match the normally found larger diameter top row to match the normally smaller diameter bottom row. The fin and sizing section on most tube and pipe mills normally have the same throat diameter on the top row as the bottom resulting in a one to one gear ratio. It's imperative that we keep the ratio of the gearbox matched to the ratio of the tooling. Failure to do so will result in tiger striping on the rolls and the material, marking on the rolls and the material, and surging of the mill line itself. Sometimes it is mechanically impossible to match the gear ratio availability of a gearbox to the sometimes found larger diameter top roll in some applications. When this happens on an M-style gearbox, we have to sometimes remove the top gear. On a W or universal type stand, we simply remove the top drive shaft. This allows the top shaft and the top rolls to find their own speed. We still want to maintain the drive on the bottom rolls on the W or universal style, as well as the bottom roll on the M style. To see what our gear ratio is on the tooling, if we have prints, we can simply take the smaller throat diameter of the bottom roll and divide it into the larger diameter of the top row, and that will give us our ratio. If we don't have prints, we can simply take a diameter tape and measure the throat diameter going in the center of the roll, where the dry point is, obtain that figure, do the same thing for the top row, again going to the center of the roll, where the dry point is, and obtain that figure as well. Again, divide the smaller one into the larger, this will give us the ratio that our tooling was manufactured or reworked to. To determine the gear ratio of the gearbox, again if you have prints, see if that information is on there. If you don't have prints, see if it's stamped on the housing. If it's not stamped on the housing, we can go to the inside of the gearbox and look at the transfer gears of the bottom shaft to the top shaft. The bottom shaft will have a smaller gear, the top shaft will have a larger gear. Divide the number of teeth or the diameter, just like we did the tooling, smaller one into the larger one to get our ratio. In the absence of that, we can simply see what the relationship of the rotation of the top shaft is to the bottom. And we do this with what we call a ratio wheel. Follow the link at the bottom of your screen and print off one of these ratio wheels that will fit the size of your mill. Print it off, laminate it, once you do that, take an awl and poke a hole in the center of it. Purchase some magnetic material that has adhesive on one side. Punch a hole in the center. Stick it to the back side so that now we can affix it to the ends of the shafts on the outboard stand. You'll see that one ratio wheel counts down 360 degrees in a clockwise direction and another one does it in the counterclockwise direction. It depends upon the direction of your mill. This particular stand has a mill direction of right to left. So the top shaft turns clockwise and the bottom shaft turns counterclockwise. So with that, we want to take the clockwise ratio wheel and affix it to the top shaft. We put the awl in the center of the ratio wheel, which will line up with the center of the shaft and line up the zero right at the top. Pull your all out. Do the same thing with your counterclockwise ratio wheel for the bottom shaft. Again, line up your zero to the top. To make sure we're all lined up, we take a straight edge or a scale. And again, we line to the centers right there and there. And we want to make sure that we have those zero marks lined up. I'm just going to make a real small adjustment here. And now we're just going to jog the mill or rotate it by hand. And we don't have to turn the dial an entire revolution. Because you can stop at any place we want. So we're going to rotate this until we get to a real simple, let's say 60 degrees at the top shaft. Again, we'll take our straight edge and we'll line everything up. First of all, we're lining on the center marks right here to see if it's lined up. I'm going to rotate this so I can get my 60 degrees to be right in the middle there. 
and I take a look and see what I've got on the bottom, and the bottom is 90. 90 divided by 60 gives us a 1.5 gear ratio. That's the ratio we want to make sure that we match the tooling. If we have both of them matched, our mill will run smoothly without tiger striping, marking, or surging of the mill line.